today, what we're going to do is we're going to start our project on uh, forensics. So a lot of you guys have watched CSI maybe, right? And you know, you can see that they solved the crime in an hour, right? And then not only do they solve the crime, they, they can tell you the backstory of everything that happened, okay? And that's going to be essentially your job. What you're going to do is you're going to utilize all of the labs that we've done recently in order for you to analyze evidence and data to put the picture together as to what happened in the crime. Okay? So this project is essentially kind of like a capstone. A capstone project is essentially a culminating project um, that asks the students to use the skills they've learned in the class and kind of put it together and complete an investigative project. It's a capstone project because it basically is the culmination of everything that you've done in class so far. You've learned how to do titrations. You've learned how to do um, analysis of solutions using a spectral photometer. You've learned how to do calorimetry and density. And way back in the beginning, you also learned how to do chromatography. Do you guys remember all that? Now, you should have all of these labs already in your notebook. And so when I allow you to do the experiments, I'm not giving you directions on how to do it because it's all in your notebook. On the first day of the project, essentially what I did was I introduced the crime to the students. On the night of April 15, 2015, there was an industrial fire at Allied Union. Allied Union is the name of the company. Now, Allied Union is an explosive manufacturing company, so they make explosives. Now, Due to the explosives and the chemicals that were present at the site, it took firefighters two days to put out the fire. So there was extensive damage done to the structures. Okay, your job is this. You're going to work in groups of four, and no more than four. And you're going to analyze the evidence, and you're going to piece together what you believe happened. You're going to produce a poster that summarizes your results, identifies who the suspect is, and gives a reasonable explanation for the crime. You have to discuss the motive, and you have to support all of your claims with evidence from the experiments. On the first day, each group performed a particular experiment. So what I did was I numbered the groups, um, groups one through eight. And on the first day, groups one and two would be investigating the chromatography experiment. All right, we're, we're testing the chromatography um, and like, we have like different pens in each like person, and then we have to test each pen and see which one matches the note that way we can decipher who did it. So like, this is kind of like a big old pot of past labs. So we're just looking at our past labs that we've written, and we're following the same directions and applying it to this one. It starts yeah. out dark right here, right? Same. This looks, I don't know if you see it, but it's a little bit of red right there. Right where it says yes. here. You see, yeah, see it? I see, now, I, see it, it I see a little bit of red like, on that one too. As it gradually gets, gets, goes up, the colors start to um, identify. Yellow, yellow, blue, blue, at top, purple, robber. Groups three and four, they perform the water sample analysis. So samples of river water taken from around the area where Allied Union, the made-up company, was located. Uh, we're testing the acidity of the water found at the crime scene. So we're adding base, and we're calculating how much base we add to the water. <laughs> and depending on how much base that we add into the water, then we can determine how much acidity the water has. I think that the contamination started upstream because uh, wait, it, it's, it was darker it was when you the, added more base. Yeah. Well, just because it's darker doesn't mean that it's contaminated because the base cancels out the acid, so if there's less base needed to you know, turn it pink, then that means there's less acid in the water. So if there's less acid, that means there's less toxic waste. So, I mean, which one took the most base to you know, like turn pink? So, so they're contaminated. So they are contaminated, right. Okay. My role during the investigation was to act as a facilitator. The students themselves, they should already have the skills needed in order to do the lab. But if I noticed that a group was struggling, I would walk over and kind of give them some guiding questions to put them on the right path. Steve Proctor could be the, the, the culprit. Why? 
is trying his best to minimize costs and to maximize profit. Okay. Therefore, by dumping the toxic waste in the river, he wouldn't have to pay for disposal service. Oh, okay. All right, so he has a motive. Okay, does anyone else have a motive? CZ Arbol. Groups five and six, they were responsible for analyzing a sample of a fluid that was found at the scene. We're gonna pour the solution into a test tube and we're gonna dilute it with water to um, get the concentration. Get the concentration. We're gonna get a cuvette, put it into this, which is already calibrated and everything, and it's gonna tell us the, the concentration. concentration. And we're gonna record all the data down. And basically, with the data we collect, we're gonna make ourselves a graph with a um, best fit line so we can find the concentration of this unknown fluid found at the crime scene. We did a serial dilution. We started with uh, nine mils of water and one mil of BPB. Uh huh. And we diluted it down by half and half and half and half. Okay. So, what did you do the concentration every time? We s divided it by, into two. Okay. We, half the parts per million. Okay. The uh, last two groups, group seven and eight, they were responsible for analyzing some metal casings that were found near the crime scene. So there was a bullet casing found at the scene. So this lab is testing the metal that we have and we're trying to see if it matches with the metal with the metal of the bullet casing that was found at the scene and trying to figure out who, who shot the gun. I mean, not, yeah who shot the gun and where Ganda came from. The following days, they would each then rotate to the next lab. So after all the investigations were complete, the students were given time to put their evidence together in a poster. Right at like Aladdin, it was a multi-cytic, right? Yeah. And they then downstream. They were disposing it the way it was supposed to be. Oh yeah. I Since we're blaming the CEO, do you want to have all the reds pointing to him, or should it be like reds pointing to other people too? Well, there can be reds, um, different colors, colors for each person. person. Well, no. Then... The gallery walk is a teaching strategy that allows students to be actively involved. So I wanted to make sure that every student was involved in listening to a presentation and evaluating it. Our third task was to identify a mysterious liquid found at the site of the crime scene. Uh, we, used, we used a special photometer to find the concentration of the liquid and we found it to have a concentration of over 7.5 ppm, meaning that it was an accelerant believed to be kerosene used to start the fire. But, and then from these, pieces, from these three pieces of evidence, we now know who has the will, motive, and determination to burn down Allied Unions. The advantage of doing a gallery walk is that the students are actively engaged, they're up, they're moving about, they are involved in the whole process, and they're buying into what they are doing. Upstream, the, the water was very neutral. We had to use very little um, base to make it basic, which means that it was a neutral solution upstream. Um, at the side of the river, it, um, we used 9.3 milliliters, which is a lot more than upstream. So it, basically that means that it's at the site, they, it was very acidic, whereas upstream it was not, which means that Steve Profits and his company were dumping acids in the river. The one thing that I wanted all my students to be able to show me in this capstone project was that they had the ability to critically think. So tell me, tell me what happened upstream, tell me what happened at Allied Union, tell me what happened downstream, tell me what your data tells you about the toxicity of the river throughout okay. the whole process. Okay, so upstream, it's very clean, very neutral, but as soon as you get to the side of Allied Union, you, you'll see that it's like acidic, the water, meaning that they polluted the river, and then downstream, it's a little less acidic because like when you move downstream, it's like Pollution is a little less than it is at the site. Okay. So, so most of the pollution occurred where? In Allied Union. In at Allied Union.